Hello buddies! Welcome! Welcome to you all! It is so good to see you. I am here with the uh, evil fish and his gang. You might notice that some people are missing. Uh, that's actually because I re-specialized uh, Miraculix and Hermetix, which I've renamed as well. But the problem is they uh, disappeared from my party. So I think we need to go all the way back <laughs> to the beginning. So hopefully we don't run into, uh, let's say, too many evil doers on our way back. Just wanted to see if... Yeah, I think we had it all, except for the uh, couple of Earth Elementals over there. Did I check that one? Maybe I did. I think so. Welcome Fenrir, welcome Abaddon, the Lurker, tonight. Awesome, that is just fine. You need to get up at 4.30, dude, that is so early. That is so really, really early. Even more early than, than me. Alright, or earlier, just earlier. Yeah, no, we checked that. Okay, cool. Um, so we just go here. Well, all of you. Tropidorix on the run. There we go. Hey, hey, Braskas. Hey, buddy. Good to see you. And with with me, it's evening. But yeah. Afternoon, exactly. <laughs> or I guess whatever time appropriate. Greeting. <laughs> oh, Masawa Club. So, unfortunately, uh, no response in regards to the fish club that I would like to get made. So, if someone watches this and are able to make mods, please make me a fish maze. That'd be that'd be nice. That'd be nice. Composite longbows, we're gonna grab. And light mace, no. Scythe, no. There we go. Cool. I also realized that uh, Sepal, Sepal, he has point blank shot. So Wonderful. he should now just have a normal light crossbow. So, already so I gave him that. Problems. Best order long hey, Candy PK. Infantry and beef up the fortifications. Or we could avoid fighting them and save the money for something more urgent than battling barbarians. I believe I like we that. should set up a camp for the night. Okay. A sturdy bludgeon. <laughs> yes. A fish bludgeon. I need a fish. Uh, he can cook and he can hunt. Tropodorix. Maybe he hunts for, I don't know, a tone. I don't know. And hi, Alucard. Good to see you, buddy. Aw, oh, he spoiled the hearty meal. He did that on purpose. Oh. Oh, no. I did not know. We don't want random encounters. We, we need to go back. Oh, we only have the four guys. Okay. Okay. Let me... Let me boost myself a bit here. Shield. I think there's going to be something evil here. False life. And that one. Does he have any summoning? Because he, I think he also has... I actually never checked his abilities. I, I realized that. Uh, he has acid dart as a spell-like ability. Oh, cool. And I think, yeah, precise shot, point blank shot, augment summoning, superior summoning. So where is all his summoning stuff? Yeah, we definitely need more summoning for, for him. Tropidorix can cast some Cat's Grace. Eagle Splendor, Charisma. Wow, he's casting fast. There we go, okay. 
Nearly no cost time. Uh, okay, so I think we are buffed what we can buff. I knew it. I freaking knew it. Cyclops. Jeez. Run, dude. Ow. Okay. Are we gonna talk? Nope, we're gonna fight. Okay. Fine by me. Fight by me. So let's summon. Dogs, lizards, wolves. Let's summon wolves. Sing. And... Oh, he should shield. Oh, nice. Though. And E, extra attack. Then punish that guy. Come on. Ow! Freaking. Ow! Hey, Mordrick! Whoa! Whoa! Oh, I just noticed they are dread zombie cyclops. It's it. Whoa, okay. They are zombies. They be zombies. Holy smokes. Let's make you invisible. Before you die. Uh, did he... Did he cast it? Did he... Did he, Yes. Okay, good. I mean, that is 20% mischance. Let's fatigue him. Oh, jeez. Jesus. Ow! What about fire? You like fire? Well, yeah, but ow, okay. He did not care much. Stunning fist. Ow, come on! Whoo! Zombie clips. This is not the end. And then, and then my character went down. Oh my! Okay, I'm back. I'm back. I'm okay. <laughs> oh, they stink even more than than um, hermetics. Yep. Yeah. Villas Gunderson, the man you just saved, catches his breath and smiles brightly, as if he hadn't just been zigzagging away from his pursuers. His clothing and equipment are an odd mix of quality, durable items and pompous, decorative elements. Even his shirt seems uh, cut specially to provide unobstructed view of his chest, which is adorned with two golden chains. Uh, Baron Vaughn, your grace, what fortune meeting you here? Until now, I've only met unpleasant guests on my morning escapades. Who says escapades? Willis does. Uh, Magos smiles warmly at the stranger and extends his hand in friendship as to an equal. He also stands in such a way to, as to capture the stranger's attention, while not blocking your view or Sephel's greetings. You are. A bit weird though, because he's, he's invisible, so, yeah, okay. Okay, they can't account for that, I know. Villas Gunderson, your grace. Apparently uh, flattered by the attention, the peculiar man strikes a proud pose. A scientist, a traveler, and researcher of antiquities at your service. It is a pleasure to see you that my barony attracts such educated people, and it is most regrettable that they must face such difficulties. Megar nods towards the dead, now entirely dead, Cyclops. Where did that creature come from? There's actually two of them, dude. I have no idea. Villas's voice seems tranquil. I was enjoying the view and taking notes when an ill-mannered simpleton stepped into my light. I politely asked him to step aside and allow me to finish, but he wouldn't listen. And when I turned around, I knew he couldn't have, for zombies have as much reason as manners. Look closer. While Megar entertains the traveler in conversation, you carefully examine his gear and clothes. The first thing that strikes your attention is an intricate yellowish 
jade bracelet on his wrist. You can tell by his ragged state that Willis has been on the road for at least a few days, and indeed, from all appearances, mostly off-road. Uh, try to determine the origin of the bracelet. This should be easy. The bracelet looks carved of a whole piece of jade, and of unusual hue. Even from a distance you can see the patterns that decorate it. Obviously signs of the relic's origin. This item came from the ancient Cyclops Empire. But what is it doing here and how did this hapless traveler acquire it? He knows. He knows of somewhere. Well now, this Cyclops is much more polite, isn't he? Magar falls quiet for a moment, allowing you to add a few words to the conversation. Uh... What? How, what? No. So you're an antiquity specialist, Sir Gunderson. That bracelet you're wearing is certainly ancient, isn't it? You didn't acquire that right now, did you? You won't find a better specialist in ancient treasures on either side of Tours of Lebanese. Villas shows you the bracelet, bracelet readily. Oh, nice. This knickknack is my latest find. I... I found it on the river shore. I would see, it would seem the water washed it out of some ancient burial mound. No doubt it is very ancient and may have serious scientific value. I haven't dated it precisely yet. You must understand, such things take time. But I swear, Desna herself guided my hand. Megar approaches and pats the lad on the shoulder, gently taking the bracelet from Villas's hands before he can object. Mm, this is quite interesting. The barony doesn't yet boast of its scientific achievements, but I think we can find a specialist who should be able to determine the bracelet's origin. If this is a precious item indeed, your efforts in finding it will be generously rewarded. Here, take this as an advance. He takes a purse from his belt and hands it to Villas. Where did you say you found it? But the river. Miller seemed taken aback by expropriation of the bracelet, but regains his smile when he feels the weight of the purse he'd just been handed. I'm only happy to help, in any way I can, Baron Vaughn. With your connections, we'll surely discover the origins of this find. And meanwhile, I may employ my time on something just as useful. Did you know that besides scientific articles, I also wrote fiction? And I cannot pass up the opportunity to write about the exploits of the Vanling host and chronicle your first steps as Baron. You wouldn't mind, would you? Not at all. Not at all. So long as they don't ask me to sit for a portrait. Megal laughs infectiously. I was born to a noble family, so my childhood was a waste uh, wasted on sitting with my brother and uh, mother and brothers for a train of grand portraits. I was only spared the torture after I covered my waistcoat in tar and lit my pretty feathered beret on fire. That's pretty dangerous. So long as you spare me such torments, Villas, I don't mind what you do. You should find some place to settle in Vanhold and get to work. I'll send word when I receive news about the bracelet. As you wish, Your Grace. It is a pleasure dealing with you. Willis Gunderson hurries off in the direction of Vanhold. Very cool. So that is his Lindsay, basically. Megavon. Megar follows him with his eyes, then scoffs. That went well. Of course, the lad is lying through his teeth. But we got more from him than we might have hoped. Vaughn looks pensively at the bracelet. Okay. Why did you invite this Gunderson to Vanhold anyway? Do we really need even more foolish treasure hunters in this backwater? My mercenary gut. Nine times out of ten, when my gut tells me to keep my eyes peeled, the situation is about to get bad. Of course, there's always the tenth time, and my gut is merely predicting a severe hangover. But I don't think that's the case this time. Megar frowns for a moment. Maybe Gunderson really is just a charming chatterbox, and he ran into that dead Cyclops by accident. And maybe this bracelet is a simple piece of jewelry, but something in his story doesn't sit right. 
I suspect that Gunderson lied about finding him in the river. He clearly been wandering for days through dungeons by the look of him. Ha! Didn't I tell you, Sefo? There's something wrong here. The bracelet is an ancient Cyclops relic. It doesn't take a specialist to see that. I agree. Perhaps we shall find a Cyclops treasure around the corner. This does not alter, alter the fact that our leader continues to leap at every shadow and makes f a fool of himself for random passing strangers, instead of focusing on important matters such as engaging in the barony politics. He's such a bore. Cephal. The lad finds an ancient Cyclops relic in a dungeon, runs out with the zombie Cyclops at his heels. I see no mystery in what happened here. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. A keen nose and an eagle eye. Megal pats you on the shoulder in approval. I hope the dead Cyclops is the only thing that crawled out wherever this lad stole the bracelet. What a story. We've hardly solved our problems with the centaurs and we already got a new riddle and a personal chronicler along with it. We should look more closely at this paltry rhymes, his paltry rhymes. Cephal, take the bracelet and see what you can make of it. Evil fish, keep an eye on our new friend, Fish Eye. Visit him in Vonhold when you have the time. Maybe you'll manage to prize something else out of him. That's it. Let's move. Very cool. Nothing. All right, let's we just do check. It my way. Yes, we do. Oh, okay. That's a that's a zombie, if I've ever seen it? one. And we're missing our healer, so I just need to I just need to heal a tiny bit before we carry on here. There. There. What is this? Mage armor? I don't need no mage armor. Well, I could actually use mage armor. I do have the braces of armor. But it's it's one more. One better. Uh, shield of faith. Just to be sure. Die, die, Skeleton die, champion. Die, die, Hello. And we have we do have blunt. Oh, better names for the fish club. It could be a plus five holy mackerel. <laughs> Where's your good trade priest when you need him? Yeah. He's he's back at a, at, at the Baron Hood place. Can we hit him? Hit him, baby. I deserved ah! Oh, good lord! They came from behind, guys. Ow! Okay. Okay. Yeah, you guys need to survive this because we. Uh, we kind of don't have a save. Believe in yourselves. Believe in yourselves. There we go. Good job. Oops. Archer dude. Spells not working like that. There. I'm not so good with spells. Uh, have they removed the fast? With spacebar and items you have just used. Uh, what do you mean? What can I do? Fast use. Uh, spacebar for me is is pause. Maybe maybe um, I haven't heard about that. Well, he died. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to onward hope that we can make it all the way back. <laughs> Maybe we can rest here.
before. Oh, you a person. Had a javelin, copper ring, couple of things, nothing big. But that would actually be very, very useful. Uh, controls. Action bars. Mm, I don't see it anywhere. Nice. I knew there. I mean, this was this was like going into an encounter. Something there. All right, cool. Let's see if we can rest. Yeah. Okay. A small spot. In the inventory, if you right-click a stack of potions and say, use them. Oh, yeah. That's right. You can right-click like this and then use. Oh, and then I can just hit space instead. Thank you, buddy. Good tip. You should maybe go watch it and tell me if we need to react on it. Okay. Okay. That doesn't sound good. Is it uh, aimed at us or... I mean, he did write me and you that he was going to put it up and put a disclaimer in that he was mad and stuff. And we did react to it after. It's because we had, we had an incident where people were getting a bit angry at telling each other how they felt about each other in wartime during the BBL. Can you send me where where it kind of says like a, a timestamp thing? Where it goes sour because you weren't like 20 minutes ago you weren't that at that point. So I would love to get that if you can send me that where it starts from. Oh! Okay. Hey, Halwin! Good to see you, buddy. So awesome. All right, reading time, guys. Now you, my dear readers, have finally learned how I, Willis Gunderson, author of this tale, first entered the acquaintance of, the, of Baron Varn and his companions. But as much as I would like to dwell, delve into this remarkable meeting, I must remind myself that by no means and am I the main character of this book. Perhaps one day I, it will occur to Baron Barn and or the General to mention me in their memoirs. For surely our encounter must have made an impression upon them as well. I mean, I'm not the lead person, but still he manages to mention himself in the start of the book. Okay, it's fair, fair. As fate would have it, the party has another adventure before returning to Barnhold. Having decided to take a shortcut, they find themselves in an area with strange furrows which crisscrossed the ground here and there. Baron Vaughn and his companions are cautious and approach unnoticed as a young centaur whoop and leap from one furrow to another. After a moment, Baron Vaughn prepares to call out the creature. He looks very happy-go-lucky, but the general and Cephal Laurentus shake their heads and the Baron exhales quietly. The party looks on in silence. Cephal tries to stop him, but then the General nods and the Baron calls out in his bold voice, drawing the centaur's attention. Ah, uh, let's just uh, take a look at him and see what he does. The centaur frolics down the path and straight into trouble as it turns out. Another leap and the ground explodes in a fountain of dirt and stone and the muscle of a great monster suddenly appears straight out of the earth, right under the centaur's tenders, tender hooves. We don't know what it is. 
Even a seasoned veterans of the bonding host have never seen more a more menacing uh, beast. The terrifying, terrified centaur manages to twist away and escape with his life. The monstrous jaws have cut a deep, deep wound on his si legs and side, but at least it haven't crushed him. The boy's painful screams echo through the air, while the dull, crumbling beast prepares for another attack. Baron Vaughn takes up his sword, steadfastly set on settling the matter himself. Mobility or stealth? Ah. The general touches the Baron on the sleeve and quickly whispers his plan. He suggests that they approach the monster silently rather than rushing at it full speed. Or mobility, the general leads the charge relying on his vigorously attacking skills and artful maneuvers. Okay guys, your turn. What do we pick, one or two? Just uh, punch where you want. On the screen. Yeah, you just click on the stream. And if you haven't tried that before, just click on the stream where you want to vote. So one is option number one, mobility. Option two, right there, that one, is the stealth. Oh, it doesn't work. All right. Just right. Yeah, right, right. Uh, two. One or two. One or two. Uh, we have three on stealth right now. Four on stealth. Oh, sound alerts are covering it. Okay. How about this on? St okay, we're gonna go stealth, guys. Yeah, the layers. The layers. Reasoning that such subterranean monsters is uh, reasoning that such a subterranean mon monster is okay is unlikely to rely on its vision. The warriors of Vani the bonding host move silently forward, dancing from one boulder to the next, careful never to touch the soil. The general's plan is a success, and they are able to approach the monster undetected. As they draw near, the warriors' strike is in unison, um, throwing all their might into a single precision and deadly attack. The wounded beast roars and tries to escape under the. Your banner flies here once more, brother. I'll put it on top. Yeah, I'll put it on top. I think maybe if I move it, move it, move it. If I move it, move it. Like put it right there. Um, one or two, one or two guys. I'm gonna try and put it up again and you guys can see if you can click it now. One, two or three. Can you guys test it for me? I don't know if that's better. Oh, oh, we have three clicks now at least. We have three clicks. All right, one it is. The general and the baron exchanges glances, nod silently and attack the beast with a finishing blow. Can't get it to work, Halwynth. Oh, dang it. Hey, Super Choco Lopo. Ch Super Choco Lopo. Super Choco Lopo. That is an awesome name. Welcome. Could this monster withstand the united attack of these battle haunted comrades? The answer, why doesn't go away? Stop there. Uh, the answer could be, but a decisive no. With this second blow, it roars one final time and then its lifeless flesh sinks onto the ground. Another glorious victory for the bindling host. Awesome. Boulette, it was a boulette, bone plates, and diamond dust times 11. Wow, that's a lot of gold. <laughs> Another visitor. Yes. 
<laughs> yeah, you get welcomed here by everyone. It's good to see you. Despite their victory, the young centaur is losing blood quickly and has but moments more to live. Do we aid him, guys, or do we not help him? Do we not help him? I'll put this one up, and you can vote there. And if you can't vote, just press the uh, one inside uh, the chat, and I'll, I'll be able to see. Once we get more people on the stream, hopefully, it'll be easier if this works. So I'll, I'll take a look at that. Definitely up for the help. There we go. That's the help. That's the help, guys. Clicking two doesn't work because things are in the way. Yeah, totally rigged. <laughs> Baron Vaughn greets the boy and strikes up a conversation. Cephal Laurentus, mumbling something about reckless risks for questionable purposes, approaches the beast's lifeless corpse and starts performing some calculations. Meanwhile, the general decides that it's the perfect moment to learn more about centaurs or don't interfere. One or two. I assume when the circle's color change, it means it registers my click. Yeah, it does. Yeah, evil character. Well, we have several characters in here. I, my, the main character is evil, but I'm not. I'm not the leader here. The general, and and still, I mean, it, it's chat. Chat is picking here. One. No, I'm not. No, I'm not the main character. We uh, learn more about the centaurs. The centaur says his name, Ruiko, but it sounds more like a nickname than a real one. He is manifestly stunned by the courage of Baron Barn and his people. It, it's Baron Barn. It's Baron Barn. That is the main character, and he's chaotic good. He hesitantly prepares to go away, explaining that the tribe would soon notice his absence and that he might be punished for taking, uh, talking to the two-legged. The general delicately manages to get some further information from him. For the most part, it only amounts to what the team already knows. But they learn that the centaur belongs to the Norman tribe, and their leader is one Arekra Silverfire, a name Ruiko speaks with the fiery awe of youth. The Norman women consider themselves guardians of this land and stand ready to defend it from any invasion. Ruiko also tells them with a sigh that the tribe is very small, unlike in the olden days. War and disaster has taken their toll, and the other tribes no longer want to deal with the Nomen. No men. Ruiko's word makes it seem all though, as though the other centaur tribes consider his own tribe perhaps a little mad. Saying warm, well, uh, warm goodbyes to the young centaur, Baron Varn nods, content with his own thoughts, and leads the party on to Bondhold. Cool. I do not like that Gunderson, even if he is not a spy. And mind you, I still have my doubts. Vagabonds like him always bring trouble. 900 XP. Keep all the vagabonds really from breaking their necks in the ruins. At least if he finds something interesting, he'll bring it to us, not Brevoy. That is true. Yeah, that was a that was a good pile of XP right there. No, uh, Varn is the leader, so he's moving. I'm not doing anything. I can't move. I can't make decisions. Uh, so sometimes it's about him. Sometimes it's about the general. The d general is me. So if you see a general thing, you might consider going evil. After a daring raid into the lands of the vile, vile, the vile centaur, the wild, the wild, <laughs> Baron Varn and his companions returned home, and I, Villas Gunderson, had the honor of accompanying them. A time of peace has come at last. Van Hull greets one serene dawn after another, but in this dark land, I dread to think what awaits us. <laughs> The pun in chat. 
My wife is on a tropical fruit diet. The house is full of stuff. It's enough to make a mango crazy. Crazy. <laughs> mango crazy. Mango cra I. Oh man, they are so bad. <laughs> bad jokes. Kerdy. As Kerdy approaches Warren, a winch crosses her grim face. But she speaks not a word and instead hands him a document. Aha! I see you've included everything, just as I asked. Thank you, Kiadi. Kiadi. Vega, what does this mean? Tell me, what am I to make of this? As he reads it, the old man's wizard, old wizard's eyes nearly pop out of his head. Okay. I sent some much needed aid to our neighbors in the Shrike Hills. There are only possible allies in the coming carnage. Cephal, I know your opinion, but be realistic. The Aldori are not our friends. We can't count on them for help if something happens. We're expendable. You will not preach realism to me, you naive boy. Yes, we are bargaining chips to them. That is exactly what I'm basing my politics on. A delicate contraption which you are smashing to bits. War will come to Brevoy, even you can see that. But as long as it hasn't yet begun, can scarcely do better than pretending to be the Eldori's most loyal vassals. Yeah, right. So, um, Shrike Hills, that's us. That's my chaotic good character that uh, that he sent aid to, or sent message to, is sending a message to. Um, you mean we need to wait until they drop their guard, make them rely on our help, and then when civil war breaks out in Brevoy, strike back in the, uh, strike them in the back. You say an alliance with the Eldori will end in a bloodbath. That surely means we'd best keep away from them. You're both wrong. The Eldori are noble. Okay, I, I don't think I would say the first one, but I think the last one, like, we can take over everything. Evil fish would love that. Exactly. Praised be Asmodeus. At least someone in this traveling circus could understand me. <laughs> Listen to me carefully, you three. Yes, Yeri, this involves you too. Things are looking bad. First, the land here is fertile, but its most bountiful crop is Cyclope's graves. Second, it shares a border with the Ovaria, well known for its epidemics. Gods forbid the wind carries the next plague here. Settlers are reluctant to come here as it is. I can scarcely blame them. Okay, so that is basically the original Cyclops of lands. And human settlers have united in the land into an empire in the past, but currently the land is largely largely wilderness thanks to a series of plagues okay do not become too attached to Varnhold this is but a stepping stone our real prize lies to the west but what does Varn do he sends them gifts better to send them assassins without their baron the Shrike Hills would descend into a struggle for power and Silver Step in the Canelands would fall to us soon after I, I've always uh, read that as the Camel Lands. <laughs> it's pretty weird. I thought it was Camel Lands. I can see now it's Came Lands. Came Lands. Such villainy! Do not interrupt your regent, Vaughn, or relieve me of the position this instant. Oh, he's regent. What is the oh. most important thing here? The Aldori are afraid of unleashing war. They know that if they tried to separate from Brevoy without some kind of outside support, the Sotova would crush them. So, we must convince them that we are their most loyal allies. We will stoke the Aldori into an uprising. When the unrest picks up, we shall strike them in the back and make them fight on two fronts. While you, Your Grace, were drinking wine at the feast, I was busy acquiring a map of Nivotka's Crossing. Look at these fortifications. If we could seize this town, we'd win a significant piece of Brevik land along with it. After we've assisted the Sotova in hanging the Aldori on the gates, they would allow us to keep part of what we have seized as reward. Then we will have peace and prosperity. Yeah, he, he definitely wants to take over stuff. Get out of my <laughs> sight, Seth. Get out! 
Never would the name of Magar Vaan be tarred with such abominable villainy. It never happened while I was leader of a mercenary party and won't happen now that I'm Baron. Fate as modious. What did I do to deserve this punishment? Why do I deal with you at all? I should have taken my share and retired a long time ago. I'll be off somewhere soon enough to Absalom or Cheliax. I shall read books on the porch and drink wine while you do whatever you want. Burn the city down and get yourself killed. Okay. Me later. We need to talk. As the old wizard storms off in a rage, you hear a magical whisper. Okay. I can't believe my ears. Must the history of our country begin with such villainy? Oh, Seth. Seth. Oh, He's right there. Well, let the old devil cool off. I'll talk to him later. Is that all, Kiadi? Kiadi. The dwarf shrugs and hands him another paper. I see. So, we've got a revolutionary from Galt on our hands. A tavern keeper writes us. She saw the revolutionary walking around, stirring up the people for an uprising. Well, you're the general. You go and deal with it. Talk to the tavern keeper. Find out where to look for this instigator. Well, far be it from me to teach you how to do your job. When you finish, report back to me. By the gods, what a worry. Uprisings, intrigues, <laughs> these damn letters. That Gunderson and his bracelet. And the Baron has to see to all of that and listen to everyone's complaints while he's at it. What a nuisance. <laughs> Mega leaves in a cloud of curses. Okay. He's not too happy. He's not too happy. Just leave it to me and I can, I can definitely do something with this. We do it my way. Exactly, my way. Or the highway. Alright, so... Let's sell. Because we have a lot of stuff. Also, I want to show you guys the new... The new people. The new... Um, unhygienics. That is... I renamed him the... Uh, English translation because it's a bit easier so I made him still be a cleric he's still a cleric but I made him into where is it there into the herald caller instead so he's gonna be summoning lots of stuff and he's gonna be shooting and he's gonna be channeling and buffing that's it so no more uh, pet with him but he's still gonna be summoning stuff then we have get a fix which is uh, uh, Miracolix as I called him before the herring caller <laughs> yes the caller of herrings I mean that that was kind of the idea that he he brings in fish so so he he should be able to have something but you can't summon fish <laughs> that'd be fun <laughs> And I couldn't get a maze, so, so yeah, he 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 has he deals with with animals. And then we have Getafix. I made Getafix into a druid, but also a an alchemist, because I think Getafix he deals with a lot of uh, potions, uh, stirs the pot, and and gives out the potion. So I think that he needs to be an alchemist as well as a druid. Um, I made him into the vivisectionist because that means he can drink the mutagen and then he can transform into a wolf and he has a wolf companion as well a nature's bond with a wolf so that should be interesting also I think we have a sickle yes he he always has a sickle in in um uh, in the stories that he uses to to gather herbs for his potions and tinctures and he doesn't have a shield but yeah we're gonna give him a shield and then we have the hide armor give him that and we're gonna give him the belt of strength so he has 20 strength 
we're gonna give him the Helmet of Guiding Light so he has a higher Lore Nature skill and he can cast True Strike as a swift action.